All right, I just wanted to embarrass you real bad. Okay, good. And then the gifts. There's chocolate out there. There's fake root beer out there. Actually, if you get some soda, some soda water, and mix that in, it'll be just like root beer. You probably get two or three root beers out of that one box. Maybe more than that. But you go back in, grab a hold of some dad's root beer, get some chocolate, eat all day long. It's your day. My brother said, there's no rules today. No rules today, Father. Day. All right. Hey, tonight's race, the RC time, when you come in, you'll be directed to the side of the building, to the back of the building, to the grassy areas. But you will not be using this very front part up here because that is going to be our racetrack after the service. It's going to be really cool. And Jason Hasten is going to show us all how to do it. Right, Brother Jason? Amen. That's right, yeah. What? Well, get me going? All right. I'm going to go down and get my car. I haven't gotten my car yet. Oh, my gosh. You're out. I got to go right after the service and get it charged. I think they're all sold out. Huh? I think they're all sold out. Oh, they're all sold out? Yeah. Exactly. Well, I'll just run around the track and beat all of you, all right? Yeah. Brother Gary, come here. Thank you all for being here. How about that? Thank you all for being here. It's great to be in the house of the Lord. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, I thank you so much for this beautiful day you've given to us, God. I thank you for these beautiful people you've brought to your house, Lord. Amen. We're so grateful to be here and just worship you and, and hear preaching from your word, God. Um, I pray that you'll be with us. Move in our hearts, Lord. We don't want to leave this building the same as we came in, Lord. We want you to work in our hearts and we want to be revived, God. I pray that everything that goes on here this morning is all to the glory of you, God. That we keep our eyes on you. I pray it'll be with pastors he preaches, Brother Gary leads the singing, and all of us as we worship you in our heart and with our lips. And we ask this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. As Brother Jesus is greeting us, those who are in the choir, why don't you come up and sing this hymn from the choir. Grab a hymn book, if you will. It's hymn 521, A New Name and Glory. And we'll sing this in a beautiful way, one to another. I think it's nice sometimes to hear people up here singing while you're singing. So choir, come on up. Those of you who want to be in the choir and know a new name in glory, just come on up as well. It is wonderful to see everybody that is here today. And uh, it's good to be at God's home, uh, God's, God's church. Amen. And, uh, just praise God that, uh, like Pastor said, before I got here, I was, uh, when I first got here, I remember Pastor Professor Barry just came up to me and gave me a hug. Started talking to me in Spanish. Amen. I didn't know that. <laughs> but, uh, but I praise God for being here. Just want y'all to know that y'all all are a blessing. Hey. It's encouraging to see that, that the church is growing. Hey, Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, let's go ahead and stand, congregation. We're going to sing a new name written down. Hey. We're going to yeah. sing all three stanzas. All three stanzas of a new name written down in glory. On the first. Here we go. I was once a sinner, but I came hard to receive from my soul.
by the blood I am made whole. Are you saved this morning? Amen. Christ this morning, amen. Let's sing out on the third. In the book is written, save my friends.
watch this. telling the truth, and they did that publicly to let you know all the things that fleshly come upon us for where we want to be and what we want to do in life need to be redirected to Christ. Yes. They need to be redirected to Him. Listen to this awesome passage of Scripture. Brother Mike's going to come and read, and he's going to go, I believe he's going to uh, Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 30. Listen to this passage, and ushers, you can be coming down and getting ready for the offer. Um, if you please uh, stand in honor of the reading of the Word of God. Um, Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse number 30. And it says, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Bow our heads and close our eyes for the prayer over the offering. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for what you've been able to do in my lives and bringing everybody here, God. And I ask that you bless this offering, Lord, and bless those who are prepared to give you what they feel they can, Lord. Uh, you deserve so much, and you deserve more than we can ever give you. For everything that you give us, uh, there's no way we can give you what you truly deserve, God. So I uh, pray that you... Bless their hearts and bless this offering, Lord. In your son's holy name I pray, amen. amen. So I sit here and listen to Miss Pat and, and, and Brother Ron as they play. And I tell you what, it blesses my heart. Amen. Amen. I, I wish I could get up there and do that. I just watch him. He, you know, 
You all can't see it, but I can. He sits up here and he takes one shoe off. I'm like, what did you do that for? But I, I, I'm just messing with you. But I want to tell you, you know, it's a blessing to be able to have a piano player. Amen. And an organ That's playing. right. I, I watch him play that thing. He's got one hand up here and one hand down here and his foot going. I'm like, that's just too much for my people. <laughs> hey, man, let's all stand in this same room at the cross for you, 487. Room at the cross for you. We're going to sing uh, all three stanzas. Room at the cross for you. The cross on which Jesus died is a shelter in which we can hide. And it's great. churches are starting to say, ah, there's no need for that. You know, people are going to touch, uh, God's going to touch people's hearts. They really don't need an invitation. I, I, I would just challenge you to think about this. Can you imagine telling someone, hey, I want to take you out to dinner, but you know what? Um, I'm not going to tell you where, and I'm going to tell you when, and, and just one day, I'm going to take you out to dinner, and so you just know that, and that invitation is standing and standing. Ten years go by, and you're still saying, Hey, Gary, I'd like to take you out to dinner, but I'm not going to tell you where. I'm not going to tell you when. When you get to a certain point, oh, let's just go. When you get to a certain point, you're going to think he's a liar, right? right? Listen, I want you to know, frankly, directly, <clears throat> and precisely, Jesus Christ is coming back. Amen. Understand this. His desire is now that you come to the table. Amen. Now that you get right with him. Now that you give your heart to him. And in, in this service, in every service, how many of you know that? Amen. The entire service is an invitation. Right. You can walk down here anytime, get your heart right with God. If you need a counselor, Amen. there are men sitting on the front row. Amen. There are people all throughout the auditorium that will grab hold of your hand and take you to the back and show Amen. you how you can come to Jesus and give your heart to Jesus Christ. Amen. So you come now if you want to. Come on and do it. As we sing this song. Hold a second.
shall I take from your hand your blessings, yet in my welcome any pain? Shall I thank you for days of sunshine, yet crumbling days of rain? Shall I love you in times of plenty, then leave you in days of drought? Shall I trust when I reap a harvest, but when winter is more than now? Oh, let your will be done in me, in your love I will. Protection of his child and treasure. 
awesome, man. Yes. Help me then in every tribulation. So to trust your promises alone. Amen. Yeah. That I lose, not makes me consolation. Offer me within your heart. Amen. Yeah. Help me, Lord. celebrating Father's Day, we're going to have the RC race tonight. That's yeah. after the evening service, which correct? Is, which is better than anything. Man. Which is better than anything. Yeah. All right. That's the best. It's better than <laughs> anything, anything tonight's man. RC yeah. race. Oh, the service is better than anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. <laughs> and then the RC race is after the, yeah. what is better than anything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so have your, we're going to be, uh, Pastor already mentioned that. But we are also going to have a picnic type thing going on. Yep. So who would be able to bring, raise your hand, who would be able to bring something for a picnic tonight after the evening service? I'll cook, we'll be able honey. To enjoy that as well. I'll so cook, honey. If you want to bring something to have a picnic, be able to share something as well, we'll have that to honor, celebrate Father's Day tonight as well. Pastor and Tom, we have the my brother said I'm not home. supposed to lie in church, so... Uh, I, I'll, just, I'll just take it back. I won't cook, honey, okay? <laughs> Thanks, Mom. So, also, Christmas in July is coming up. You can sign up to bring a gift to participate in that. That'll be July 25th. Yes. And the summer, uh, in July, we're also going to have a summer preaching series. Amen. So, you're going to get to hear all kinds of different preachers that the Lord will use. So, pray for that. Pray for it that uh, month that the Lord will be able to use each one of us that will be preaching and we will also have testimony so pray for your part in that what you can do during this next coming month Amen. October is missions conference also pray for that we'll be hearing some good preaching then as well and we'll be challenged with God's heart missions and then the missions trip to the Dominican Republic is coming up. So you probably want to save is the idea. Right. You want to start planning for that. We'll start, I'm sure it'll start coming together when we'll have the specific dates yeah. and size. Yeah. That'll all come. Yeah. But pray. All right. <laughs> be in prayer for these things coming up as well as uh, our visitation. Be a part of that. We'll be meeting Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays. We, have, we yesterday was amazing. We got to speak to. It. We had great opportunity. You get a lot of opportunity at outreach, lots of it. Yeah, I got true. to speak to two people personally. Yeah, and you, know, you get to if you haven't done that yourself, you get to learn. You Amen. get to be part of that. Yes. So come this week for that and be doing that yourself. I encourage you. We're all we're doing it. We're doing it, and it's very encouraging when we get to see each other. Doing yeah, it. it is. That's what really does it for me. It's an encouragement. It's also a good accountability yeah. if you want to hold yourself to that. So be encouraged by that. And then we'll be having uh, Sunday night. There's a We're going to talk about tonight the cost for the pastor's conference coming up. Right. So come tonight, yes, and that will be discussed. Uh, who would be able to, I believe we have a water rotation put together. Right, but right. But does anyone want to add themselves to that list? What that means is just watering the plants that were put in a little while ago. Is there somebody that might be a part of that? Slip your hand if you say, I hope with like that. To be it only takes about that. 15 minutes. Ben, thank you so much. John, thank you so much. Anybody else? Okay, good. David, excellent. Thank you. Rochelle, thank you so much, honey. Yeah. You're going to do it too, buddy? All right. Good, good, good. Go, Tom. All right, anybody else? All right. So we also have the events that are in your bulletin. You can see... VBS is coming up, and you can see you can come to learn about what you can be involved in on July 2nd. Or you, and those of you that are already involved, you want to be there for that because that is a great opportunity to know what you're doing, how you can be doing things, what you what there is to be doing, and then uh, ice, you'll see the ice cream fundraiser coming up later in July. 
for the youth, as well as the summer charge, which is actually this coming Saturday. Did you say ice cream? I was just looking. Did you say ice cream? Ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. Do you see cream? it? We all oh, scream for ice cream. cream. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then VBS itself will be there. So this Saturday, summer charge, invite any youth. It's an outreach. It's an open to the community. So be inviting friends, neighbors, and such to that. Children and families are welcome as well to be a part of that thing. Hey, right. listen, guys. Joseph Hodges is a missionary to Honduras. His letter is in the back. I want you to know the Reeds are also missionaries. The Rubens are missionaries. The Hudsons are missionaries. When did Joe Household are missionaries? I, I see the two that are highlighted. But man, there are so many. The Landons, you're looking at the Simmons, the Accurates, and the uh, Mariners, the ones that I've been looking through and studying their letters. Right outside the foyer, off to the, off to the side, grab those. Read them. Think about what's going on in the world. Grab your Bible, won't you? Do that right now. Grab your Bible and just go, if you will, to our main text. You already have known. Ezekiel 22 and verse 30 today. Ezekiel 22 and verse 30. Read that with me out loud, won't you? Ezekiel 30, or pardon me, 22 and verse 30. Read it out loud, just together. You ready? And I saw for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. The title of the message is really simple. It just goes along with the verse. It just says this. Standing in the gap. Father, thank you so much for the morning. I praise you for the opportunities you've given to us to sin, to enjoy fellowship. I praise you, Lord, for the word of God. I thank you, Father, for the truths that are found in it. Father, right now, you've got to make me stand down, take me away, and put me in the low place so that you, Father, can take preeminence right now. And I'll thank you for that. I glorify you for it. I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You heard from one of my natural sons. Oh, by the way, interns, if you want to, you can sit wherever now, okay? But right there is good too, whatever you think. But these young men that are part of our church, I love being a part of a church that has so many young people. You know what I'm saying? There are so many college age, so many people who are below the age of 20. People are below the age of 30. Families who are young. Uh, Jeffrey Dale. Where is Jeffrey Dale? Put Jeffrey Dale up in the air. He's one of my favorites right there. And he's got a carrot top. It's awesome. I love it. Michelle has a radish top. <laughs> right, Michelle? <laughs> She's like, I'm not like watching you. Come on, I'm going to call me out. <laughs> or no, sometimes you call out family. I don't want you to call me out. Hey, Michelle. <laughs> no response. No response. My kids ignore me. You know that, right? <laughs> How many of you know your kids ignore you sometimes? That's what the whole message is on today. No, I'm just kidding. But it is an opening illustration. My kids, sometimes when I'll call them, I'll say, Hey, Mark! Now, here's the deal. Mark, what do you usually say? That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> now, what do you usually say? Yes. Yes. You say yes, sir, right away, don't you? I mean, the moment that I say, Hey, Mark! You'll say, Yes, sir! Don't you? Yeah. Right now, he's doing the same thing as the rest of my kids. Keep your head down. He'll stop talking about you in just a minute. If you'll leave it alone, if you just do stop. Each of you know your kids ignore you. They do. They try their best not to watch you, not to look at you, not to think about who you are. I've heard this text for years and heard this text preached wrong for years. Okay? But the fact is, none can stand in the gap. But Christ Jesus alone. A lot of people say, God's looking for a man to stand. And no, he's not. He already found one. You know who it is? It's Jesus Christ. He stands in the gap. Who else can lay his cross down between us and God and stand in the gap? Who else can do that? 
Only Jesus Christ. Who else has pure blood? Only Jesus Christ. I've heard that used over and over again. The fact is, none can stand by him. But this issue is, do I stand in the gap? In him. That's the question. Do I stand in the gap? In him. Do I stand in his way? Here's the that's the big problem. My dad has this illustration. He said there's this lady that got up one time in the service and she said, I've been in the way for 38 years. And half the people in her area said, we really wish you'd get out of the way so God can do something. <laughs> I believe thousands of men are angry. Talk about Father's Day, right? I believe thousands of men are angry. And the lady said, Amen. See how that is? Amen. They don't say, Amen. They say, Amen. I hope you didn't hear me. <laughs> I believe thousands of men are angry, frustrated, miserable, and unhappy, not just because society is telling us that we're no longer allowed to be men, which is happening. Hello? Yeah. It's true. Now the men are doing it. You say, amen? I guess I can say amen to that? Is that okay? Isn't that sad we have to wonder men? Hey, guys, be a man. It's okay to be a man. Do you know that? You know, when these people started out with this toxic, you know, this toxic masculinity, you're a toxic man. You're a bad person. You know, everybody else in society is allowed to be what they are. Boys are allowed to be boys. Girls are allowed to be girls. Women are supposed to be women. But men that stand up and say, I'm masculine. I'm a man. Look at my muscles, man. <laughs> all of a sudden, that's toxic? Hey, you guys can wear perfumes and long hair and put all kinds of makeup on and walk around like this. But guys are not allowed to be guys anymore because that's toxic masculinity. How many of you know what I'm talking about? It's getting a little, it's going a little too far. Now, part of the reason for that is because there is some pushback as to the, the fact that there was some bad behavior over the years. How many of you know that abuse is real? How many of you know that women are beaten sometimes, that children are treated badly? I think part of the reason for that is splashed all over the television set. It's called, hey, let's drink this. Let's take that. Let's go ahead and get high on this. And everybody's all like, well, alcohol doesn't do anything. Oh, yeah? You want to look at the stats on that? Yeah, that's right. You can actually go to the CDC. They'll be glad to tell you that the second highest reason for death in this country is people getting drunk and beating people silly. Yeah. So that the more that alcohol is promoted, the more alcohol is commercialized, the more alcohol is seen as, ah, you can do this and it's no big deal. How many of you think that humans are real good at moderation? Uh -huh. <laughs> no way. I just socially drink. I don't really get drunk, you big fat liar. <laughs> You're a liar. That's right. The fact is, a little bit, just getting you a little tipsy, a little buzz. The Word of God tells us that kings and queens, those who are the sons of God, have no business touching it. Amen. Neither looking at it. The Bible says don't even look at the wine when it is red, which means yeah. alcohol, when it is alcohol, when it is taking you over. Don't even look at it. Don't even look at it. So, my friends, we've gotten this idea that Christians are all good with it. You coat the up, just a little bit of drinking. Ooh, you know, my friends, I'm telling you right now, it's killing us. It's killing our nation. It's hurting us as a people. How many of you realize it's just not good for the human heart? Yeah. It's not good for the human body. It's not good for the human liver. It's not good right. for the human soul. And whatever the Word of God says is not good for someone, guess what? It's not good, it's not good for them. But I take it in moderation. Well, I kill in moderation. Just a little bit, you know. Come on. I have adultery in moderation. You know what I'm saying? I fornicate. It's sin. When the Bible calls something S-I-N, it's just sin. Jesus drank alcohol. Jesus drank mosto, which was grape juice. It was grasped out of the bottom of the stomach of a sheep to last all year long. 
and it was fresh grape juice reconstituted with water. That's what Jesus drank. And that's what Jesus made in the wedding feast. Because back then, fresh grape juice was the best kind of wine. And that's why the master of the feast said in that moment, wow, this is better than anything yet. Yeah. Why? Because it, was it wasn't old and moldy. It was new. Now let me ask you this. Do you really believe that Jesus Christ would represent the blood of his son? Jesus Christ would represent his own blood, pardon me, that he would represent his own blood with something crusty and old and moldy? No. no. It was fresh. That grape juice was fresh. You'll even see pictures of people exposing it, taking it and squeezing it into a cup for kings. You see those pictures, haven't you? Yes. Haven't you? Haven't you looked and seen the hands of people around grape juices and the juice is flowing into the cup? My friend, let's get back to truth because in 2,000 years we've lost a lot of it. How many know there's a lot of lies out there? Yep. Yeah. How many know that a lot of people are just disgustingly vulgar with their lies, starting the president all the way down? How many of you know that? Right. How many of you know that Congress lies through their teeth every day, the Senate as well? How many of you know that? Yeah. How many of you know that preachers lie all the time? Right. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe just a little. I don't know. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says, let God be true and all men liars. Everybody's a liar. You know who isn't lying? This book is not lying. And so in Proverbs 30, when it actually says, oh, them well, them well, it is not for kings to drink. Period. Guess what? You are a king. Under the king of kings, you are the prince of the king of all things, and you have no business touching it, king. Amen. You have no business touching it, prince. And then he goes on and explains why. This is really cool. He says this, because you drink and you'll forget the law, and it's none of your business. It's not hard for you to do that. So, Pastor, why are you stuck on that theme? There are a thousand themes I could have chose. That was just the one to start with on this. We are so far afield from where we need to move. We are so far afield. Thousands of guys out there, thousands of ladies out there are refusing to take their position as a queen, as a king. Listen, allow yourself in the throne room of God to assume your position and live righteously before God in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. By His grace and only in His power, you can do that. Yeah. It's only through Him. I realize that. But God called them to lead His church and for whatever reason they thought they couldn't. So why do we refuse to stand in the service of God? The pastor, I thought the message was standing in the gap. It is. It is. <laughs> Why do we refuse to assume our positions in the church of God and be there, faithful, doing the work, always bounding in the work of God, always doing what the Bible says to do? Why do we refuse to do it? Four things. Four things we believe that keep us from that. You're going to see them right in the text. You're going to start in verse 17. And you're going to end in verse 31. You're going to start with verses 17 through 22. You're going to start with verses 17 through 22. And in those verses, you're going to read this. We are not gold and silver, but dross. We are not gold and silver, but dross. This is the belief, Brother Earl. I, I want you to get this. This is the belief. All right, Benny Ann? This is the belief, Jason. I can't because I'm dirty. You know what I mean? I can't. Pastor, I just can't because I'm dirty. I've done wrong. I've been evil. Oh, you don't know this week. He talked about alcohol. I was drinking this very week. I was involved in alcohol and marijuana. I was involved in other things. I may have been involved in women. Oh, my goodness. I looked at poor now. No, Pastor, I'm dirty. I can't. Well, here's what the Bible says in verse 17. It says this. The word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, the house of Israel is to me become dross. You know what dross is? Basically, it's just the off down. You could call it excrement. You could call it whatever is in the latrine. That's what you guys are. Have you ever thought about this? What is dirt? Huh? What is dirt? What is topsoil? Decay. 
And that decay generally comes from what, Alicia? Compost, right? What is compost? Okay, you guys feeling me on this? All right, so what were you made of? Yeah, you're feeling me now, aren't you? What were we made of? Man, get this for just a second and think about the fact that we are dross, just like he said. We're the off scouring, we're the off putting, we're not the gold, we're not the silver, we're not the precious stone, we're the dirt, we're the. Okay, verse 19, look. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because you all become dross, behold, therefore, I gather you into the midst of Jerusalem as they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin into the midst of the furnace to blow the fire upon it and melt it. So will I gather you in my anger and my fury. I will leave you there and melt you. Yea, I will gather you and blow upon you in the fire of my wrath. You shall be melted in the midst thereof as silver is melted in the midst of the furnace. So shall ye be melted in the midst thereof. And ye shall know that I, the Lord, have poured out my fury upon you. To use a verse I use an awful lot that Jeremiah 17, 9 says that we are all Dirty, we're filthy. The heart of man is deceitful and above all things desperately wicked. Here's what you see in that passage, and this is what I want you to get. Burning is no fun. Burning is no fun. How many of you have boiled water and just, you know, as you were working with it, it just poured on your arm or on your hand? Or how, how many of you know what I'm talking about? Hey, can you imagine that? I was in an accident a, a, a few years ago where a woman was burned on 80% of her body. I knew of another guy, 30% of his body. I mean, the scars, the things that produce the burning. What God is saying here is, I want to burn you up so that the junk that's in you is gone. And what is left in you is that man standing in the gap. That one who is the principle of all. You say, now, Pastor, if you burn me up, I don't know that there'd be anything left because I don't know if Jesus is even in me. If we ever realize the only real, honest to goodness, good person is God. And if He's in us, then praise the Lord for that. But if He's not, oh, what a shame. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 25, if you will. Isaiah. Chapter 1 and verse 25. As you look up here, read it with me. And I will return my hand upon you and purely purge away thy dross and take away all thy tin. What is he saying? I'd like to purify you. I'd like to see you become what you really need to be. Real men don't cry. Pastor, real men don't cry. Well, how in the world are we ever going to get purged, my friend? Look at James chapter 4 and verses 8 through 10. James chapter 4 and verses 8 through 10. Starting in verse 8, James chapter 4 tells us that we need to weep and cry. It says, draw nigh to God. He'll draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands. You should purify your heart. You double-minded. Read that. Look at verse 9. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaven. Look at verse 10. The Bible goes on. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. There was, there was an older fellow in the church in Baltimore named Lloyd Mullins. Lloyd Mullins. Hey, Lloyd, if you're watching, because he does sometimes. Hey, Lloyd, if you, hey, if you're watching, listen to this, Lloyd. All right, this is all about Steve. So Steve is his child, and he was he was there in the church, and Steve said, I don't know if I like this or not or not. And he was talking, you know, he's starting to get kind of critical. How many of you guys get critical once in a while? <laughs> All right, we all get kind of critical. And Lloyd turned to him. I'll never forget this as long as I did. Lloyd, Lloyd turned, as long as I live, he turned to him and he said, You're crying like a little girl. Stop it. He said, And to this day, I still remember, You're crying like a little girl. And I think to myself, Whenever I'm starting to get critical, you're acting like Rochelle, Barry. You're acting like a five year old. You're acting like, you know. Don't get your way. You start to cry. You start to complain. Sarah, don't tell me Gary does that. He can today. <laughs> <laughs> it's Father's Day. Don't make me do that. <laughs> Number two, because we're not rained upon, 
but dirty. We're not cleansed, but filthy. Looking at verses 17 through 22, we sometimes won't do the work of God because we're not gold, we're not silver, we're not precious, we're just nothing but off-scour. We feel dirty inside. How many of you are identifying with me? I want you to look at verse 26 for just a second. Verse 26 says this, Her priests have violated my law, have profaned my holy things. They put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. They have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths and have profaned themselves, uh, profaned among themselves. Inside cleansing doesn't get done by you. Look up here. Inside cleansing doesn't get done by you. So stop trying. How many of you identify with me? I've tried a thousand times not to get angry, but I still do it. I've tried a thousand times to be a certain way, and I just can't get it. I've tried a thousand times to stop lying, and I can't do it. You know what it's time to do? It's time to look up to the Savior of the world and say, Oh my God, this vessel right here is weak. It's broken. I have nothing to offer you. But oh God, if you will take me. If you will make me different, if you will do something in me, I'll be glad to give you myself. Yeah. Do you know what that's called? Repentance. Yeah. <laughs> when an individual not only says, I'm sorry, but then goes so far as to say, God, change me, that's repentance. Amen. When an individual decides, I'm headed in a certain direction, and oh, God, I need you to do something in my life. I'm trying to stop this happening. Oh, God, I'm trying to do this. Lord, please help me. And when you cry out to him and you beg him and you, you, you are actually supplicating to him to see real change, our God can change us. How many know that? Be empowered in this. You say, I can't be in ministry. I can't do the things of God because I'm dirty. I'm filthy. I'm lost. He wants to make you clean. Just jump in the shower. He's all ready for you. His blood will cleanse you. Oh, I love it. His blood will cleanse you today. All you've got to do is say, oh, God. And you know how long it takes? The coolest thing, it's only 15 hours. <laughs> you know as well as I do that in 15 seconds it can be done. All that's needed is for you to lay yourself before the God of heaven and say, I desire three things, Lord. Purity, chastity, and fidelity. Amen. Purity, chastity, and fidelity. Yes. And as you're looking at verse 26, you'll see that. You'll see it. I told you once. I'll tell it to you again. Look, in verse 26, his priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. What did they do? They were not pure. They have not put no difference, they haven't put difference between the holy and the profane. They have not done what? They haven't given themselves the ability to be in chastity because they still believe that in themselves they're good. How many in here say, I'm going to heaven because I'm good? I have been a good little boy. My friend, the Bible tells us that anyone who has looked at another person and lusted on them, that they've already committed adultery in their heart. Literally already committed adultery in their heart. If an individual sitting at a stoplight gets upset with another individual and says in their heart, what a fool, what an idiot, I can't believe they did that, that they have killed them in their heart according to God's law. They have literally murdered. So how many of us are murderers in here? Okay. You're not going to heaven. <laughs> Unless the blood of Christ has cleansed you. Unless His mercy has taken you in. Unless you have decided, I want Him. I need Him. I can't be saved without Him. There's no way I can get to heaven in my own good works. Oh God, save me. And with that humble heart, that attitude of just saying, I can't. God, please save me. You know, it's so interesting. When Jesus said to the disciples, you see this rich young guy? He couldn't get to heaven because it's harder for a rich man 
to enter into the kingdom of heaven than for a camel to pass through the eye of the needle. You say, well, what do you do? Pick it hair by hair and put it through the eye of the That's not what he was saying. He was standing in front of the crevice of the wall of Jerusalem where there was a small place. And the only way a camel could get through that place was called the eye of the needle, actually, this part in the wall. The only way that, that, a, that a camel could get through there was on its knees. So what Jesus was saying to his disciples is, it's hard for rich men to get into heaven because they just won't humble themselves and admit they're not good enough. But when an individual finally says, I can't, I know I'm a sinner, I've tried over thousands and thousands of times to get right, to be right, I've never been right, now I will put my hand in his hand, I will get down on my knees, I will crawl to him in that way by simply just saying in 15 seconds, my God, I am dirty, I realize that, but your blood can cleanse me because you died on the cross for my sin, and today I want you. Amen. So salvation is so easy. Hey, listen. You can't get it doing this. No? That's right. Come on. Jason, stop it. Stop it. Now. That's right. <laughs> I just messing with you. Right? You can't get it doing that. How do you get it? By doing this. Amen. Amen. My God, my King, your Lord, I'm not. Your father, I'll never be. God, forgive me. Number three, it's not just because we're not gold and silver and we realize that it bothers us and we're not all we ought to be. It's not just because we're not reigned upon by the first mercy of his grace, the power of his hand. My friends, how many of you know what body odor is? <laughs> Some of you may be going, yes, I know, right now I'm sending that to <laughs> We all know what body odor is. You know what? Just this morning, I had to pull up my shirt and my undershirt after I had my whole suit on because I'd forgotten to put on my deodorant. And every one of you would have been blessed by my odor if I hadn't remembered to do that today. So body odor is a problem. Tell me if that's not the case. Can I tell you something, my friends? Every day we have to do that because we're disgusting. You and I are discussing. It's interesting when people will say, don't praise God, praise yourself. That's like an ant that's barely conscious of its own existence saying, there's no maker of that, you know, not ours. I'm the best there is. Oh, my friends. How many of you have ever been up in an airplane? You look down on the earth, and can you really believe that those little ants down there really are doing anything at all really significant in the world? Honestly, be honest. Think about that. We are nothing in his sight. But for some reason, he thinks the world of us. And he says this in his word in Genesis 1, verse 26 and 27, that he made us in his own image. We talked about this in Sunday school. He made us in his own image. The three in one made us body, soul, and spirit. It's incredible when you think about it. Psalm 8. Right, put that up. Just verse 1. Psalm 8 really gives us some understanding here. Sometimes I think because we're not sheep but wolves that we feel like we couldn't serve the Lord. You say, Pastor, what are you talking about? I'm saying this. We all start out wolves. We all start out evil. We all start out goats, as it were. Not sheep. Not the living sheep of God. Keep Psalm 8 and verse 1 up there. Verse 27 of Ezekiel 22. For princes in the midst thereof are like wolves, ravening the prey to shed blood, to destroy souls, to get dishonest gain. Hello? And her prophets have daubed them with untempered mortar, seeing vanity and divining lies into themselves, saying, Thus saith the Lord. Oh, I got a word from the Lord today. Woo! Praise the Lord. Come on now. Come on. Give me an amen right now. Give me an amen. Amen, bro. You know, what we're doing is we're faking it. And we know that. In our hearts, we're fakers. Yep. Now, if it's real, amen. If it's real, raise your hand. If it's real, allow it to happen. You say, well, I only do that when the Holy Spirit moves me. Well, then you'll never do it. But if it's really down deep in your heart, a desire that you have to see Him praised, 
Praise the Lord, for goodness sake. Praise Him. How many of you want Him praise? Give praise Him, for goodness sake. Raise your hand. Say amen. Allow the song to get into you. Let the Word provoke you. And my friends, if you're waiting on the Holy Spirit to move you, He ain't going to do it. You yourself have got to make the decision to allow Him to have you. And when you do, you'll do what my dad does up here in every sermon. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. And everybody says, why does He do that? It's because He's let the Spirit of God move Him into a sense of worship like many of us just will never know. Amen. What's the problem? We're the problem. Yep. Because we've been in the lane for 28 years. <laughs> you know, obstructions are no good. Whether that be in your intestinal tract or anywhere else. Stop obstructing the Holy Spirit of God in your life. And let him flow. Let him go. Let him move. I'm afraid if I did that, I might actually serve God. Yeah. Wouldn't that be terrible? Well, I'll be praying for you. <laughs> Verse 27 goes on to verse 28, which goes on to verse 29. And the people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and needy. Yet they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. You say, Pastor, these things are even depressing me more. Well, my son David, he used to get depressed an awful lot. He'd sit and he'd get down. He'd get upset. And one day, I noticed that didn't happen anymore. And I thought, why is it that this is happening? I went there and I said, David, what's the big change? Why are you so exuberant? Why are you so excited? Why is it that you want to be? You know, he's down in Accomack, Virginia now as the associate pastor of the church down there. Just loving on God, praising the Lord, excited. I said, what made the difference, David? He said, Christ made the difference. Christ made the difference. The more I got into his word, the more I read of him, the more I prayed to him, the more real he got to be on daddy. Christ made the difference. And the greatest thing in all the world is this. He's not shutting anybody out from that exuberant, exciting, right. joyful lifestyle. He wants you to have it today. And all you've got to do is simply say, oh my God, I will not obstruct your flow anymore. I'll let you have me. Won't you take me, God? I want you to use me in your ministry, in your church, in your things. God, I'm going to give it to you. And David used to say, I can't. I can't. I can't. But now all I hear from him is, I can! I can! I can! And God's used him over and over again to win soul after soul after soul. And I watch that kid and I think, my Lord God Almighty, if every human being would just simply yield themselves to him in that way, what a world we'd be living in. Amen. Amen. And then last, because we're not Christ but flesh, it bothers us. And we think, I've got to be Christ. I've got to be Christ. You'll never be Christ. You say, Pastor, what do you mean? He is exclusively the Savior of the world. And you can't be. There's no way you can save souls. He saves souls. Amen. All He wants you to do is start to realize that you're the conduit through which He wants to go. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verses 1 through 8 is so important. You got Psalm 8 up there? Psalm 8 says this, O Lord, how excellent is the In all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heaven. Look at this verse 2. The Bible goes on and it talks about us. And it says that he has expected us. Look at verse 2 if we can. Verse 2. It gets stuck. Okay. Out of the mouth of babes and sufferings hast thou ordained strength to his thine enemy, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. Look at verse 3. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars that thou hast made. And look at verse 4. Look at what is man that thou art mindful in the son of man that thou visitest him? But thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Yeah. Look at verse 6. It says this. For thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hand. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Get this. Look up here. John, don't ever forget this. Listen to this. Don't forget this. Every single one of you can be used in ministry. Every one of you. You're allowed to have that. You're allowed to enjoy that. You're allowed to let yourself go. There's no one here that has to be thinking, I can't. You can in Christ. Jesus wants to use you. His 
goal is to make you a minister of his own. He wants to grab a hold of you and hug you, put you close to his breast, and make you something that you never have been before. But all you've got to do is decide. I know I'm dirty, but he is clean. Yeah. I know I made a mistake, but he has never made a mistake. And all I need now is to put my hand in his hand and say, Lord, take me into the pipeline. Yes. First Timothy 2 and verses 1 through 8 makes us understand that he is the only mediator between God and man. Amen. He is the only one. So, who is the one that stands in the gap? Get this. You ready? With you encasing him. With you encasing him. How many of you have a garden? How many of you have been watering your brains out lately? <laughs> All right. You know how that is, right? Does the hose do anything? Does the water do anything? Oh, yeah. Does the water get to those roots? Can the hose get to those roots? Can the hose do anything for a plant? No. You know, it wasn't too long ago as you bow your heads and close your eyes. Verse 31 says, Therefore I've poured out my indignation upon them. I've consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord. Are you a warrior who would pray and seek God's face and really desire His will? To keep all that wrath from falling on these United States. But we as a people need to be willing to be used. We as a people need to be willing to be given that right, that blessing. You know, as I think about the pipeline, these pipelines that need to be built, these pipelines that gave us uh, energy independence, these pipelines that are so valuable. They're sitting there, some of them, on the side of the road. How many of you have seen that? They're sitting on the side of the road. They're not being used. They're just sitting there. But if those pipelines could be put in place, they would carry life-giving things all over the United States and around the world. It's been proven that a lot of that is safe. You want to use the illustration of a hose and water, go ahead and use it. But you can use every kind of illustration. You use the pipes. In your house, you can use the electrical current pipelines. You can use the internet, for goodness sake. Without you, Jesus wants to get to a lost and dying world, but he wants to use you. Yes. Amen. He wants you to be a part of his pipeline. Now, he can put another segment in in your place. But again, I started with what I closed with. On Father's Day, I want to make this clear. And I am part of that problem. Everybody in here realizes, Pastor, when he gets up to preach, 90% of what he says is to himself. What he says is to himself. The preaching that was done is because of me needing it. You realize that, right? One of the things that I need to hear over and over again is that God can use me even though I'm just a vessel. And the way he keeps me clean, the way he works to make me clean, it's incredible. But his pipeline is the best pipeline. And he himself wants to flow through us. Is there someone here today that would say, Pastor, I know I need to be in his ministry. I know it. But I have felt dirty. I felt violated. I felt like I haven't been able to do it because of who I am and what others have done to me. And I just ask you to pray for me, Pastor, because I want God to use me. I want him to use me in his ministry. Pray for me. Slip your hand up if that's you. Wow, good night. All over the auditorium. I want to be used of God. Slip your hand up if that's you. I want to be used. Yes, yes, yes. I want to be used of God. I want Him to use me in ministry. I want Him to use me. Yes, good, good, good. Praise God. There's someone that would say, Oh, Pastor, pray for me because even my desire has been marred by my sin. I want to want it. But at this point, I'm just cold. How many would say that they identify with that phrase? Slip your hand up. Honesty, 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 honesty. Good. Now, how many would say, he's already using me in the ministry? Slip your hand up if that's you. 
Glory to God. Amen. Amen. First Baptist Church, almost 100% of the people are involved in something, I realize. I thank God for that. Is your heart cold today? Hey, look up here. Are you even hearing what I'm saying? Are you thinking about lunch? <laughs> Is it time to get right with God? Yes. Then come to me. Come on. Stand up right where you're at. Come and do it. Fill these altars. Come. Come right now. Do it. Come fill these altars. Get right with God. If someone needs to be saved, and you're not 100% sure you're going to heaven, come grab my hand right now. Anybody else? Come. Won't you come? You say, I've been working in the church for 30 years. Come! Pray for those who are in need. Do it now. Get on your face. Be an encouragement to the lost to walk down with you. If you're a worker, come down and start getting with the people that need to be for. Others are coming. Why don't you come? I see these coming. If you need to come to be saved, come to be saved. If you need to come to be baptized, come to be baptized. If you need to come to be a member of this church, come for that purpose. If there's a need, your neighbor, your friend, those that are around you, come and get on it. Oh, many, many are here at the altar. Why don't you come? Anybody else? Come. Why don't you come? Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Anybody else? Yes, I see that. Come on down. Yes, come on down. No problem. Glory, 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 glory,